and VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco at Moscone North Lobby for VMworld 2015. This is SiliconANGLE, Media is the Cube. Wikibon, SiliconANGLE, and the Cube are all here breaking down VMworld 2015. This is our wrap up for the show. Uh, we'll have some streaming tomorrow, Thursday, and maybe a few interviews, but this is the real the wrap up of the whole show. We're going to put it all together, roll it all up. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, Brian Gracely, Stu Miniman. We've got the analysts here, we've got the Cube team. Um, great, great event, guys. I want to just say that I feel that this is a trans, uh, uh, transition point an inflection point for VMware. And my takeaway from the show is just the overall surround sound of the echoing theme, the future of VMware, and can they get bigger with the looming backdrop of Amazon Web Services. So I want to get you guys' take on the summary of the show, obviously a slew of product announcements, NSX showing some nice milestones, Cisco with their approach with ACI, we had them on theCUBE, we had a lot of startups, we also had Pat Gelsinger and all the top dogs at VMware, really talking about the, the, the multi-cloud world, not a lot of big data, but a lot of DevOps conversations. So to me, that's kind of the, 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 the surround sound themes. Dave, your thoughts, I mean, we, you know, we're kind of, I mean, how many interviews we did, not to ask Jeff Frick what we did, but we, it seems like 150, but. <laughs> I don't know, what, we might what, have broken the record. What's your take? So, John, John, I came in here with the, the theme of wither VMware, what, what's going on, what's the future look like, and I wanted to ask people about that, what they thought, collect data around that, and I thought Nelson Nahum from little startup Zadara Storage summed it up the best. He said, if I were CEO of VMware, I would be very happy, <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, the point is, this company has really done a tremendous job of building an ecosystem and is incredibly strong. Now, you know us, right? When they get to this level, we want to see more. And as I've said a number of times, they're fighting battles on, on multiple fronts. They are a winning company. You know, the question is, can they win all those battles? Uh, Brian and I just interviewed AJ Patel, who's the Senior Vice President of the, 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 the Cloud Services Business Unit. I think you're right. He told that story as yeah. well, if not better than, than anybody. He told it better than Bill Fathers. You, yeah. you, 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 you kind of made that statement off camera. I'm going to make it on camera. It's true. It was clear, crisp. You know, there's some signs of life and momentum, but I asked him what kept him up at night, and he, he nailed the answer, scale. They've got to scale. We've talked about this a lot for the reasons why. And uh, so to me, that's the linchpin of their future. So tooling aside, they've been incrementally making improvements. Brian, I'll get your take on this deep in the cloud, kind of get down the weeds and or talk high level, they've been incrementally improving. And Pat Gelsinger said, we had things on the roadmap from last year, year before, that's been rolling out, kind of a rolling thunder of new product releases, point releases, new products. Um, but is there that scale question of, is there a big game changing, throwing the ball down the field, big move by VMware, do they have it? And again, the competition is on, hot on their heels. Right, well, you know, I think it's a couple things. We talked about scale. Scale's a matter of dollars. The, the folks they're competing against are putting a billion dollars a quarter in. I don't think they're making that commitment yet. They're not building it and they will come. Now, when we came in, I mean, I was somewhat skeptical. Uh, I wasn't seeing the developer service being put in there. I wasn't seeing sort of the acceleration of services. But like Dave said, AJ flat out said, here's our market. Our market is enterprise applications. It's the IT organizations doing some extension of those. There's a huge market there. That's an enormous market. And as big as Amazon is, you know, we've said before, there's $6 billion. You know, that's a 80, 90, 100 billion dollar a year enterprise market. They have an opportunity, uh, but they've got to articulate it. Because right now, people, all they hear is, is virtual machine, virtual machine, virtual machine. Whether you're going after old apps or new apps, you've got to talk about apps when you're talking about cloud. Yeah, I mean, just a point on that. If VMware's going to succeed, they need to have that ecosystem grow. It needs to be the service providers. Um, when I looked at the metrics that I heard at the show, we got clear numbers of growth. Um, you know, vSAN over 2,000 uh, customers, NSX over 700 customers. You start poking around at vCloud Air, uh, and it's like, well, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not thousands. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely less than that, but you know, they're putting all the pieces together, and they're still going to be finalizing, I expect later this year to hear more as to how the whole enterprise, including VirtuStream, you know, pushes forward with the whole cloud message. How about you? Weigh in, what's you know, your thoughts, takeaways? I think a couple things. One, Pat Gelsinger said one comment that, um, I, that really hit a nerve with me that I had a blind spot on, and at least in coming into the show, because we've been so focused on DevOps. I mean, we've been deep on the DevOps, obviously at a practitioner level with our software development process here at SiliconANGLE Media, 
and then and Brian's new coverage that's going very, very deep is that it's about the developers, right? So we're seeing the applications drive us. So this is something we've been talking about. So the blind spot for me is what Pat Gelsinger says, when they surveyed all the people going to the DevOps shows, they've been mostly IT ops guys. Now that makes a lot of sense because they're in the VMware ecosystem. So I see this VMware moving into the developer space. We kind of touched on it yesterday, and they don't really have an answer for it in my mind. I don't see VMware really having anything that developers would want to play with or use other than infrastructure that's transparent. Yeah. Pivotal, on the other hand, might have something. So this brings up the question of, hmm, is DevOps the right fit? Who, where should it sit? How does the new federation configuration that's being rumored uh, by the end of the month or end of October change? All that. So, that to me was something that really was provocative but also opened up another door to go down to conclusion, which is what is the future of DevOps in a VM world scale world? Is it ops dev? And then if there's a developer angle, where does that fit into this looming <laughs> change of the federation? So I'd just love to get your thoughts, guys, on that because it really brings up that question. In order to win, you got to have the developer support. You got to have an environment where you can push code and have stuff work and iterate through. So what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, for me, I've been doing a bunch of research around platforms. Uh, I think Pivotal's doing ex extremely well. I think Pivotal's excited about what VMware's doing with containers. Uh, but the other thing I'm seeing, and you, you interviewed a bunch of the vMafia VCs yesterday. I interviewed a bunch on a panel that are spinning out new companies. Um, a lot of that new stuff, the vMafia is filling in. They're doing as a service things for, uh, for OpenStack, for developers, for data services. Um, you know, VMware's got to figure out a way to keep that talent in house, or they got to figure out a way to look at these new SaaS models, because that's what developers don't want. They want easy, they want low friction. Uh, VMware's got to yeah. get to that point. I just saw Pete Sonsini came by to say hello. They have an event. So we hung out with Jerry Chen last night. We talked to Steve Cher Herod. That's a great point, Dave. We talk about this all the time when we talk to the EMC executives. Organic growth versus inorganic. And you know, can VMware continue to grow organically with all the stuff on their plate? This is the real issue. And I think you highlight that point really well. And you know what? It's a huge opportunity for startups. Huge. Yeah, so actually, uh, what I thought was interesting, we, we always get a lot of good, interesting startups here, but over the last year, there's been some of the you know, companies that were really successful that are now doing the next turn. So, you, you, Dave, you, you and John interviewed Datrium, who was Brian Biles at Dunn, Data in Maine. I, my last interview of the day was Paul Long, everybody knows from Equalogic days. Um, you know, we, we've got uh, the, the former Fusion guys doing uh, primary data. Uh, so, you know, we keep looking at these and say, how many of these companies are just going to be features that might be sucked into the big companies? And Dave, I, I know you've watched this piece a bit, well, so I want your take. Well, let's talk about, I want to talk about sort of the, the Federation a little bit. And um, you know, it's interesting, these <laughs> options that are all on the table. <laughs> like, you hear okay, all yeah. kinds <laughs> of stuff. Right, you're up. Yeah, you're, yeah. You know, we're, at the VC meetings last night, everybody's talking about it. Not a lot of talk on the floor about it. You know, it's interesting. The customers that I asked about it, they were, it was mixed. Some of them, yeah, we don't really pay attention to that. Others said, we absolutely see value in that federation. You know, one of the guys that I had on, I you know, pushed him pretty hard on it. So, let's talk about what we're hearing. You know, what's going on, what the options are. So, Elliott management, uh, the whole, you know, quiet thing expired, what, yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. So now the gloves are off again. Now you hear they're kicking it down the, the can down the road. But, what are the options? You know, we've heard yeah. we recode, there was a leak to recode about, you know. A VMC leak, oh, leaks. Building it back Targeted in. Targeted leaks. I don't know why the, they leak it to recode. <laughs> they should just talk about it in public. But so they, it's like, it's EMC buying VMware, VMware buying EMC, all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Now what we do know is there's this Tiger team that's been created, I call it a Tiger team, right? And she's been talking about that mm. a little bit, that, that there's yeah. this sort of federation group that's emo emerged, evolved, I've, heard, I've heard that right? too from multiple sources here on the ground, that there is a elite team of people looking at the customer consumption of a federated model of services. So is that a Petri dish for a new model? You know, to me, Goulden's got to be involved in yeah, the future I mean, because I mean, he's the architect of this whole thing. And I think, you know, what happens yeah, with the my, rest, here's right? My here's my take, I'll give you my take on what I'm hearing. So what I'm, what I'm seeing is, uh, a similar concept that you see Google doing with Alphabet, and we've talked about this in theCUBE on our pre-show, is that there is a new corporate governance model coming out that takes into account new business models. So the innovation is not just on the technology side. Most of the stuff we hear about adoption has, is people-based and or organizationally based. So I think that this, uh, this idea of Google Alphabet, where Google renamed their company, putting all their Project X stuff in a separate company, and their core business in, in, in Google run by, um, uh, 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 a CEO dedicated for that. I think EMC has this opportunity. They've been basically mm -hmm. operating as that kind of company 
loosely coupled with the Federation. I think they could formalize that and put more meat on the bone. That does not include VMware buying EMC. No, that's I crazy. Think the, I think the recode story is going to turn out to be false. And I think that leak might have been targeted um, by someone pushing an agenda, Elliott Capital, a source, we, we'll, we'll dig into that. But ultimately I think EMC is too powerful. I think the culture of the DNA is not going to let a corporate raider, Gordon Gecko, uh, wreck that company. And well, I think, but so you know where I stand on this. I feel like EMC has to stay the course, but it's not going to be easy, right? Because, because Gordon Gecko gets investors in a headlock. They won't give up. You know, let's say EMC acquires the rest of, of VMware. This is not over. Right, the, the, the Gordon Gecko will be there, you know, complaining, at, trying to get things yeah. spun out. It's, you know, okay. extortion takes on a variety of forms, right? right. So it's like, you know, you, could, model, you right. could say, okay, we'll pay you out your dividends, you get your share buyback, right. so, all that financial engine, and Goulden could be a master at that, and he's, yes. he, has, he plays that game beautifully. So, Assuming think, cash flow, you know, pops back up. Right. Yeah, Which the, 2017 the bigger question is, can they pull it off? So structure aside, I, I, they could probably come up with a variety of uh, versions of how to pull this off. The question is leadership. Who's the CEO? Pat Gelsinger, someone else. How does the Federation work? Is VMware going to be the lead dog in this? And is that Pat Gelsinger at the helm? And then all these other, uh, other speculative things that happen. But it clearly has to be where the, the gloves are off. Elliott Capital now can talk publicly about their feelings of VMware. So I expect the heat to go up in the, in the kitchen big time. And I think it's going to all play out. But it, I, don't, I would be completely shocked uh, if VMware <laughs> buys EMC. It's just, I just don't see that ever happening. I think it's going to be the other way around. Anything to add? You know, Dave, it, no matter what happens here, how are they going to keep their employees happy? You know, we, we've seen the shift of the, the center of power. It, it's out here on the West Coast. I mean, Dave, you and I are East Coast guys. Ryan's an East Coast guy. Uh, EMC's been there since the birth, but a lot of the management's out here on the West Coast. Yeah, it's essentially a bi-coastal company, right? I mean, yeah, but, but you know. Yeah, how I, many I, buildings I, in Hopkins does EMC have? A lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I so think if, South Street's got like, I mean, eight, 9,000 employees. Yeah, I mean, so. EMC is a culture of fighters. That's a DNA of companies that's not going to quit. I think they will fight to the end to preserve the original founder's vision. I think the VMware will have to be part of that. I just don't see EMC putting up, uh, laying down. And do I don't see Joe Tucci yeah. lying but down. Do you think Jack Egan gets more involved yeah, in this? I mean, he's, he's I think relatively yeah. young. That's I mean, a dark horse in this day. He's, he's, so, he's still in his 50s. It, it's yeah, still, it's been, there's still it's been very different cultures between the VMware campus and you know, EMC, East Coast, West Coast, doesn't matter. So you know, there's differences there, so you know, putting them together doesn't, does, doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that it, it, classic East Coast, West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, EMC has an injection of, of West Coast over the past few years. We talked about this, how you know, Pat Gelsinger came from Intel. Hey, this is how we innovate Moore's Law. And you know, now have West Coast and Jeremy Burton's out here. So I think they're used to the bike coast. So I don't think that's a problem. I think the issue is going to be, how does the industry respond? And how fast can EMC actually organize themselves to roll out a corporate structure? So Google is pretty clean. You got two founders, Larry and Sergey, core business throwing off a ton of cash in search. And they have all these speculative projects, self-driving cars. Project uh, X now in Mountain View. So that's to me, I can get my arms around that. EMC, I just can't yep. materialize. Well, the key is the VMAX. The key is the well, the key is the new initiative's got to start throwing off cash, and that's not going to happen in a big way in 16, but it could happen in a big way in 17. We're talking about you know DSSD and AirWatch and NSX and vSAN and. Yeah, you so know, I mean, on, one, on, one, on, of the, one of the one of the gripes I hear is there's the inequities in the market. You know, if you're an Amazon, you know, you don't need to be profitable. If you're Google, you can do something like Alphabet, and everybody's like, oh, this is awesome. And your EMC and your VM VMware, you're doing good. You're leaders in your marketplace. You're still growing. And you know, no, you need to you know do all this machination. How about VirtuStream? Interesting acquisition. You know, kind of signals that they were filling some holes. What's your take on all that? I mean, yeah. SAP obviously. Obviously, SAP. I mean, we, we heard some. You know, we heard some talk on the on the street and in the hallways. Uh, you know, they may spin out sort of a cloud business unit. Maybe put together vCloud Air and VirtuStream. Uh, maybe Rodney Rogers runs that. We heard some of those rumors. Um, you know, I mean, we said coming in, and, and you mentioned this. You guys, you know, talked to Dave Donatelli, like. To compete in this space, you've got to have a cloud. When we talked to AJ, he was saying, well, our, our network of people is as big or as, as Azure, but you know, you've I'm got to- I'm not sure I buy that. I don't know that I buy that number either. I don't that, that's, buy that. uh, but, All right, but, I don't know, other is big. <laughs> other is big, but, but I, I think the reality is the big players control their cloud, they control their thing. I think, you know, people have said for a long time, they've got to control their cloud. Is it going to disrupt some of their distribution channels and some of their partners? Absolutely. But there's no game plan for any of these guys that doesn't disrupt that somehow. And, and they've got to right. live with that. You know, we live yeah. in a new world of co-opetition. We're going to live in a new and world. It's the last true ecosystem in the enterprise IT world. And 
Yeah. You know, this, eco this ecosystem is unique. I mean, VMworld is a, like an industry show. It's, even though it's VMware's VMworld, it's really the people's VMworld. So what's interesting about this show is that the ecosystem is actually out there going crazy, going, hey, this is unleashing all this new opportunity from startups, as we mentioned, to a reconfiguring of, restructuring of a federation. I mean, I think people are, I mean, generally not depressed at all about the future scenario. Right. I mean, I think wherever the chips fall, there's growth, right? Well, so people are upbeat. And, and how about Sanjay's business? I mean, you know, he, he's, he made a statement. He said AirWatch will turn out to be the second best acquisition you yeah. know, ever. Yeah, right, in the I think, I think their business, business mobility pitch VMware. is very relevant. They put together a really working solution. I was talking with Simon Crosby here earlier, and he, were, he and I were commenting about Citrix and some other companies. AirWatch and that business mobility story by Sanjay Poonin, it works. They have a workable, viable product line, sets of platforms and tools that actually gets business mobility working where you can have consumerization of IT. Now it's a starting point, can it be better? Of course it can be better, but that is a winning formula. They are Wait, onto something Where's there. Citrix in this whole discussion? They really didn't come up much this, this week. I, they've, they've come up a lot more in previous. Well, they're, they're, they're struggling. I mean, you've got, you've got Mark Templeton who's been there for a while leading, going through some transition, so he's not the same leader he was before, and they've got Elliott Capital, you know, they've got Elliott Management in there, and we know what they do. We've Gordon seen, what they, on their we've seen what they do at Juniper, we're seeing what they're doing at EMC, and they're in there with Citrix. So, right. I think they're struggling, I mean, they're, you know, to, to make an analogy, they're in a deflate gate situation. They don't know what the next day looks like because somebody may drop the ax All right, Amazon Web Services, how much of a force, we always love to talk about how we lunch, we love them, and the disruption. Mark Lewis from Formation Data said, double header, game one's over, blowout, 10 run rule, then nothing, Amazon wins everything in game one. Second which is the, infrastructure as a service. Which is infrastructure as a service. Well, you could argue integrated stack and, and, and runs a free for all on top of it. Now game two, enterprise. Going on right now, early innings. What's your take on that? Obviously they, they're forcing everyone's hand. We hear Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Um, clearly cloud is not only viable, it's happening right now. And so Amazon has certainly shown the way. Thoughts guys on Amazon? Well, the fundamental, you know my take on this, the fundamental mar marginal economics favor Amazon because of the volume. And they are going to win as a result of that. Now, how much they're going to win remains to be seen. As you pointed out, it's a huge market, but they, they're going to be number one. And they, you know, they essentially are number one in infrastructure as a service. You can argue, okay, Microsoft, we argue, Microsoft's number one if they put everything in, but Amazon's cost structure is going to be better than anybody's. Yes. And, and that is going to give them a huge advantage. So, to compete, you either have to have volume, which Microsoft has, or you've got to have some kind of differential advantage. Oracle has that. VMware, we heard from AJ today, potentially has that. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. but they've got to articulate that better. But they don't have scale. And so They don't have the scale, right. The, the, the thing that worries me if we talk about cloud is follow the applications. Amazon has a lot of the new applications. IBM has worked their way into the mix because of all the applications they have. I mean, the cognitive computing, you know, Watson they've got out there, they've got a big ecosystem. Analytics. Uh, and yes, analytics. You know, they, they, I mean, they have a kind of like a Oracle in that so, sense, right? I mean, Dave, if you look at the raw numbers, you know, IBM is up there in the discussion, past Google on, on, on where they are in, 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 in the infrastructure as a service piece. So VMware still, you know, they don't own the applications, so you know, how, how do they stay relevant uh, as we go forward? Okay guys, we've got to wrap up here. I want to get some plugs for the events, but before we do that, I want you guys to just um, give the final word overall on VMworld. You know, in short, bumper sticker, what's the tagline? How would you size up this show? Elaborate if you want to add color to it. Brian, we'll start with you. Um, so, a couple of big things for me. Uh, I thought the energy was very positive. Like you said, people are, are excited. Um, you know, incremental stuff from VMware, but people, like you said, that they're excited about the space, maybe for themselves more than VMware has been in the past. Um, and I think they're, starting to make baby steps into certain areas, DevOps, uh, you know, applications and so forth. And they're a company with a lot of potential and the question is, will they get to unlock that potential? Yeah, for me, I mean, you know, I mean, today was, for me was storage day. And you know, believe it or not, the world does need another storage company, I guess, because there's so <laughs> many of them at this show. So that's uh, surprising to me, how much investment and activity there is still going on in, in storage, but it just says that we still got problems out there. Stu? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I wrapped up with Paul Long, we said, you know, there's not going to be one storage solution fits all. There, there's a lot of growth out there. There's still a few categories uh, that are there, and th there's, there's some good innovation coming out. Uh, so, e echoing Brian, uh, there's good energy, solid. Um, you know, the, the week went better for VMware than I thought it would, and some of the negative undertones uh, were kind of more in the background. Yeah, I mean, my final thought is, is that I believe that I see VMware, I see 
the muscles flexing. I see VMware standing tall, saying, hey, we are a proud company, we're a bunch of geeks, we're, we're technologists, and we're going to go to the next level. And no matter what is in front of them with the noise, they are going to go to the next level. So to me, I think I felt it, I saw some messaging was tight, you see some unification amongst the management team, and no matter what happens with the noise, I see VMware saying, we are going to go to the next level, no matter who's running it or which company we're part of, there's a huge future, and that was clear from that. And my favorite analogy was, I forget who, who used it, I think it was the CIO of uh, VMware uh, said it, he said, you know, there's surfers who surf waves. If you're sitting on, out there and you're letting waves go by, um, they're not really productive. But there's two waves to surf now, cloud and mobile, okay, and get on those waves and surf it. And then he kind of backpedaled and I said, well the beach needs to be cleaned up, so stop <laughs> playing in the waves and go clean up the beach. So I think that's my metaphor for VMware. There's a lot of stuff to clean up. Get, get, get everything cleaned up, then go out, have some fun, and surf those waves. So if they don't do that, they'll be the driftwood, Dave, and, and using Pat Gelsinger's analogy. So that's, that's my summary, guys. Thanks so much for that. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. We have a lot of great sponsors. VMware, uh, the list goes on, on and on. I don't know where the list is. I think go to siliconangle.tv and check the sponsors list out. I want to thank our sponsors. Without our sponsors, we would not be able to be here. I want to thank the team who put this together. We have two awesome sets, our new innovation, is the director set for the cube, and we're going to continue that format on our larger cube uh, opportunities. So appreciate all that help. Next couple of events is the next one is Console Connect, and I got free <laughs> tickets here. Anyone who wants to go, uh, complimentary, three hundred dollar value per ticket. Go to my Twitter handle, DM me, um, leave a comment, anything. Just ping me, you get a free ticket to Console Connect. That's on September 9th, twenty fifteen. Splunk.com, September twenty first to the twenty fourth. And then Big Data NYC is going to be huge this year. And what's going on that week as well as Strata Conference is going to be going on in conjunction with Big Data NYC, so check that out. And we'll be having our special session there at Big Data NYC. Uh, and then obviously Amazon reInvent, October 6th through the 9th. That's going to be a big show. I know we're, Dave, we're looking forward to that one. Pentaho World, October 14th. Grace Hopper, October 14th to 16th. Women in Tech, we're doing a lot of programming there. So a lot of great events. Stay tuned to siliconangle.tv for all the extensive coverage in technology. This is theCUBE signing off from VMworld 2015. Have a great time. <laughs>